Good evening, people. Watch them in 65. Lisa Boyce, I'm going to give you a verse of scripture out of John. This is for people who think they can lose their salvation. John 10, 27, all the way to 29. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give them, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. That should be a mic drop moment for your average person who believes that you can lose your salvation, but apparently it's not. Verse 29, my father which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hands. He said that twice. When you are born again, you are sealed. Let me give you the gospel in which you are sealed by. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Christ shed his blood. For all of our sins, past, present, and future, was buried and rose again on the third day according to Scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone. Not of ourselves, not of works. At least any man should boast. It is grace. Something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believe in Him will not perish but have eternal life. How do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. The moment you put your faith and trust in Christ, not only are you saved, but you are justified by the blood of Jesus. You are protected by the blood of Jesus. You are rapture ready, which is going to happen literally at any time. And you're sealed until the day of redemption, which means you cannot and will not, again, lose your salvation. You just heard the verses right there. John 10, 27 to 29. He said it twice. And no man shall be able to pluck them out of my hand. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. You are sealed. You will not lose your salvation. Period. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you, lead you, guide you, minister to you, encourage you, speak to you, teach you, and change you if you let him. If you let him. So you got to be in his word. In order to get to know him. It's not about religion, folks. It's about relationship. It's about relationship. So, um, <clears throat> this came in over Instagram. Someone, uh, two people sent me this. I guess Israel did it again. So, they're getting all the top head. All the top heads of Hezbollah and Hamas. So, they got another one. They said... And is it really airstrike deep inside Lebanon this evening? This evening. Uh, I guess it took out Samar Mahmoud al Haj, a senior Hamas commander. So see, what they're doing, and like I said today, Iran is doing this by design. They're purposely making Israel wait. That's why they haven't done anything yet. That's what they think. But they don't know that God has all this in design already. But Israel took out another uh, Hamas official, top official. So I don't know how they're going to strike back. I know they will eventually, but it says here, um, <clears throat> this person who they took out oversaw attacks against Israel and commanded Hamas forces in the uh, refugee camp and was responsible for recruiting and training more terrorists there. So he is eliminated. I want to uh, go over this. This came out of, off of war news earlier today. Actually, it came out an hour ago. Japan, for the first time in history has issued a warning about the possibility of what's called a mega earthquake after the 7.1 earthquake. Now, this has never happened before with them. 
Seismologists held an emergency meeting and the Weather Service eventually issued what is called a major earthquake warning. Judging that the chance of a major earthquake was relatively higher than usual, but not that it would definitely happen in the near future, they're saying. And I beg to differ to that because they've had a few sevens over there. The alert was issued Thursday evening after uh, Thursday evening local time telling citizens to be alert but not to evacuate their homes. Authorities stressed, therefore, that the warning did not mean that a large earthquake was imminent, but that the possibility was greater than usual. Now, this is after the 7.1. Um, we ask all citizens to carefully check any new information issued by the government, confirm their daily earthquake preparedness, and be ready to evacuate immediately if required. This is Prime Minister uh, Fumio Kishida, he said at a press conference. So three people were reported injured. I'm surprised, that's it. <clears throat> Japan's uh, Chief Cabinet Secretary, uh, Yomesa, I think his name is uh, Yo Yashimesa, that's it, Yashimesa, said, though he added that there were no power... There were no power outages or damage to water supply. They must have a very, they must be really well structured to take this because a seven point something earthquake would have done a lot of damage to the average city. Um, he said there was no power outages or damages to water supply or communication systems in the area. So most of the damage so far is relatively minor compared to the intensity of the earthquake. Uh, the police um, said there were some reports of landslides and some traffic lights stopped working. Additionally, there were, no, there were reports of some windows being broken at the airport. Cleveland Hopkins Airport went through a, a, a storm and their whole system went out. This place went through a 7.1 earthquake and nothing happened. Hmm. It says uh, it is recalled that a tsunami reached the coast of the um, region of southern Japan, as reported by Japan's uh, public broadcaster after the 7.1 magnitude earthquake that struck western Japan. Uh, no anomalies have been detected in the operation of the uh, Kagoshima uh, pre. Uh, structure nuclear power plant its operation continues as normal so i don't know why they put they must be expecting something that made them put this alert out japan does lie on the ring of fire a line of seismic faults uh encircling the ocean and is one of the most earthquake prone countries in the world and it is when they have an earthquake it is it, they have these seven point earthquakes. But they're calling for. This tells me here that they're expecting a bigger quake. That's what this is saying. They're expecting a bigger quake. They don't know when. And it sounds like it's soon because they wouldn't have put this warning out after that earthquake. So they're expecting something. <clears throat> they're expecting something there. Um, now, Israel. I can't say I'm surprised to see this, but Israel, they're talking about getting ready to sacrifice the red heifer. A red heifer. So the world's about to be shocked by the sacrifice of the red heifer. Is the world about to be shocked about the sacrifice of the red heifer? I thought they had did it, but apparently not. So on, on September 15, 2022, five perfect heifers were flown into Israel from Texas. We all remember that. 
They got a lot of attention, but at the time, all of those red heifers were too young to qualify for a red heifer sacrifice. A couple of years have passed since uh, then, and now they are all old enough to qualify. And it is being reported that rituals, that rituals that would be part of the red heifer sacrifice are being practiced now. So, what does that mean? It means that the rapture is near, like I've been saying. Um, the information that I'm about to share with you is quite stunning, but it does not mean that a red heifer sacrifice is about to take place. Ultimately, authorities in Israel will decide when they feel the time is right. I think those that brought the red heifers to Israel were planning the sacrifice one of them once they reached the proper age. But then the war started and that changed everything. And that's the reason why the war started, according to what I've read in the past. They wanted to stop this. Hamas did. A fact that spokesperson for Hamas identified the red heifers as one of the reasons why Israel was attacked on October 7th of 2023. 20 miles north of Jerusalem, five Texas red Angus cows chew on grass, oblivious to the fact that their mere presence in Israel was cited by Hamas as a reason for its massacre of what happened on October 7th. So they say the cows were a justification for the attack, stating that bringing them to Israel was an aggression based on a detestable religious myth. So they say. So they say. Apparently Hamas was convinced that if, if a red heifer was sacrificed, Israel would make a move to take control of the Temple Mount. Now, there is a holiday coming up called, it's on the 9th of Av, which is, let me see. If I look at my phone, I got, I got, um, both the regular English date here. You can't see that. Yeah, it's too blurry. You can't see that. I got, okay, there it is. I got the regular English date here and I have the um, Jewish date here. So today is the uh, 5th of off. So today is the 5th, Saturday 6th, 7th, 8th. So the 9th of off is uh, Tuesday, which is supposedly their holiday. We will see what happens that day. It's an interesting day. So apparently uh, Hamas was convinced that if a red heifer was sacrificed, Israel would make a move and take control of the Temple Mount so that the rebuilding of the Temple could begin. Hamas has called the importation of the red cows an aggression. Because it falsely believes that the presence of the cows may ignite the rebuilding of the Temple which the group thinks would end Arab control of the Temple Mount where the mosque is located. Those that are involved in the Red Heifer Project did not want to inflame tensions even more, and so the sacrifice of the Red Heifer was put off for another time. Well, <laughs> but now that Hamas has almost been totally defeated, this is what they're saying. Does that change things? So Middle East Eye is reporting that some of those involved in the Red Heifer Project have been practicing for the day when a sacrifice will finally be allowed. A group of religious Israelis have been pictured practicing the ritual of the Red Heifer, which is meant to herald um, the building of a new Jewish temple on the site of the al Aska Mosque. According to Jewish tradition, the ashes are the ashes of a perfectly red heifer cow are needed for the ritual purification that would allow a third temple to be built in Jerusalem. So, temple worshipers are now practicing the mitzvah of the red cow in front of the temple mount, which will enable the return of purity and observance of all temple mitzvahs. This was posted on Tuesday. 
there are two things that immediately jumped out at me of this picture. Number one, the cow, the cow that we see is most certainly not one of the five red heifers. Now, this article goes on. In fact, it's obvious nowhere, not, not anywhere close to being a perfect red heifer. Number two, uh, the photograph here was not taken on the Mount of Olives. Now, this is by Michael Schneider. because we can see that the Mount of Olives is in the background. So, they're practicing for this. And as you can see a tail behind me, there's a cat. Come on. So many relig religious leaders are very much looking forward to the day of the ashes of the red heifer. So we shall see what happens with this. Because they, if they're practicing, then they're going to be doing something soon. I'm guessing. So I will keep track, of course, of all of this. And I will give you blow-by-blow blow details of everything that's happening. I will see you, if anything, unless anything comes up tonight, I will see you on Cat Today. Catterday. Tomorrow. Catterday. International Cat Day is every day. Catterday is Saturday. But for cats, it's Catterday. <laughs> I will be back tomorrow. Unless something comes up tonight, I'll be back home. Thank you.